I'm going to explain it very carefully as an official British person. Hello, I'm Ben Barnes and I play General Kirigan in Netflix's show Shadow and Bone and I'm with BuzzFeed and I'm going to answer some of your questions. What is my favourite emoji? Oh, that's very good. I have become quite partial to the black heart recently. That, that, that was a thing that sort of came up actually when I got this job in Shadow and Bone. Um, do you know what? I'm going to get my phone here. I'm going to see what I've used most recently. I've been using the pancakes quite a lot, but I think that's because during lockdown I've been eating quite a lot of pancakes. The most challenging role I've ever had to play. I think the, the role that I've played that I prepared the most for, I played a character called Ryan in a, in a film called Jackie and Ryan, and I learned to play the guitar. So I had lessons sort of a couple of hours a day, every day for months. And, you know, just to the point where, you know, there's all those songs about like old Brian Adams songs about, played it till my fingers bled. I did, my fingers were actually bleeding. That's difficult because I played quite a lot of psychopaths and murderers and evil villainous types as of late. And then early on in my career, I played quite a lot of sort of earnest, quite heroic characters. And I'm not sure, I, really, I, I think most of us exist somewhere in the middle. I played a wannabe rock star in a film called Killing Bono, um, who was an absolute pillock, an absolute fool of, of, of a man uh, uh, in that, in the, uh, well, I made him into a fool. Maybe that one, I don't know, no. It's probably somewhere between Killing Bono and Jackie and Ryan, I would say. I really like um, films and TV and stories that are about um, hope and, and about identity and where we fit in and where we belong. And I think that even if you're playing the villain or the antagonist in the story, often there there is an opportunity to show other sides. I think I think, you know, as human beings we all have the capacity to be everything. So there's always opportunity for um, you know, sort of redemption and to see, you know, where someone is tough and hard on their exterior, where are they soft and vulnerable and my interest as an actor is to take characters that seem one thing and, and show where where they are the antithesis of that thing. I would be lying if I said that every time someone fan cast me as pretty much anything online, I didn't get a little buzz of excitement. If, you know, and I know it's only three people, but every time those three people say, you know, oh, I'd love Ben Barnes to be Batman, or I'd love Ben Barnes to be James Bond, or I'd love him to be the next sort of Marvel anything. It definitely gives me like five minutes of sort of emboldened swagger, even if I'm just around my house. I'm just like, yeah, I'm Batman. And, and then you're not. I feel like I know all of the major superheroes because I'm a big fan of superhero stuff. I've never missed a, a you know, DC or a Marvel film uh, or any of the shows pretty much. And so I feel like a lot of them have kind of been taken and interpreted. I do like the slightly, the slightly off kilter ones, which is why, you know, when they asked me to play, um, you know, Jigsaw in, in, in The Punisher, I was like, oh, he's a, he's a really damaged, that could be a really damaged person. That's kind of interesting to me. So I think my strengths are probably not in the kind of Superman, Peck flexing territory, probably more in the you know in the slight in in the sort of slightly broken humanity of what the superheroes are, which is why the the sort of um, the Batman's and the Moon Knights and things like that have always kind of appealed to me a bit more. But um, yeah, it's probably it's probably one that I don't I haven't heard of. And then someone else will tell me that I'd be great as that, and then I'll do that. <laughs> I love fantasy as a genre in general. I love the way it can sort of tell stories through allegory and, you know, you've got this fantastical world of cloaks and magic and horses and armoured trains and pistols and heists and all of that. But essentially, it's just every single character has the same plight and ambition, which is to resolve their, their sort of demons um, and, and find out where they belong. You know, as I get on in my career, you know, you want to know what you're telling the story for. And this particular character, I think, was, again, it was one that I was sort of vaguely fan casting over a period of time. I, like I said before, I just think there was opportunity to turn someone who was kind of very mysterious and powerful and, and see where there might be hope and a kernel of love left in him. So that, that was what was interesting for me.
Ah, now we're talking. This is better. Well, the, the drinking actually in the book uh, that, that, that he's sipping on is, is called kvass, which I have no idea what that tastes like. It's a bit like butter beer in Harry Potter, isn't it? You just have no idea. And then you drink it at Universal Studios and you regret it. I think he's probably like a whiskey, like a straight whiskey guy or maybe a gin and tonic kind of man. Cocktails, maybe a Moscow mule. Maybe, maybe that's what he drinks out of one of those fancy copper mugs. That sounds like him. What was I listening to? I was listening to a lot of um, Muse, like that Exogenesis album, it was sort of grand, grandiose stuff. I usually make a playlist for characters, but in this instance, it didn't seem to make very much, it didn't seem to make very much sense. Anything with drums and cellos at the same time. I think it would be brilliant um, because we've got a lot of musical people, particularly Kit, uh, who plays Jesper, is, is he, he used to delight me by coming around. I, I, I got a piano while I was there because I want to continue like, you know, practicing and writing songs and, you know, playing while I was there. And he used to come over and delight me by playing like the Back to the Future theme tune on it and stuff like that. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of musical episodes of things which aren't already musicals. I love, I love musicals and I love, so, you know, dramas with music in them and if you set out to make that then great but but doing a musical episode of something has always struck me as a really weird thing. Well I, I sort of started out doing that, that and lots of musical stuff when I was when I was younger and I, I always loved like sometimes stuff like Into the Woods. I was born to play like the wolf and the prince in that. When I was younger I really loved the music from like Jesus Christ Superstars, thought that was really cool. Um, and then I've always wanted to play Sky Masterson and Guys and Dolls as well. Brando in the movie version of that is just one of the coolest things you'll ever see. Every job I do, I take, I nick something. Yeah, I've got various things dotted around my house. Above my fireplace, I've got my sword from from the Narnia movies. From this job, I actually took one of the like beautiful black kefters that I was wearing, um, and then I bought this giant black mannequin and I put it on that, and then I put it in our showrunner Eric. I put it in his office, so you know if we get a season two and he's writing that, I'll just be sort of looming behind him in his desk. I don't know if you can expect one, but I get to have Narnia reunions quite often because, uh, you know, Anna, Papa Wobbly, Susan and Will Polto, Blake Eustace, um, still, you know, uh, they're two of my best friends, so um, I hang out with them all the time. So I get to have Narnia reunions often uh, and I, you know, I still speak to, to lots of people involved with that, with that show. Yeah, no, I, I get to have them, but you don't. This is a very good question, and um, I'm going to explain it very carefully um, as an official British person. You boil the kettle and you put the preferably PG tips triangle-shaped bag in the mug. Then when the kettle is just boiled, you pour the water into the mug. You let it steep for at least a couple of minutes. You then take the tea bag out. Anything else is sacrilege. Take the tea bag out and then you pour in a splash of milk and stir it and then it will be perfect.